so last week we stopped off with me um, getting into a car accident, um, waking up into the hospital. I kind of wanted to give you guys a rundown of my injuries before I kind of go any further. That way you guys can see the gravity of kind of what happened that night. Um, I was stuck under the engine for two and a half hours. That's what I was told by the paramedic, but I also know that multiple, uh, t multiple cars had driven by before anybody um, had actually stopped, and that's because they could not see us and he was not waving anybody down, this particular party in my accident. Um, so this is my rundown of my injuries. <laughs> and I don't want anyone to think like, poor girl, that poor girl. Don't think that because I'm a better person now because of it, but back then my self-esteem went to shit, point blank period. So rundown of my injuries, uh, multiple concussions, I broke every bone from my orbital socket on the right side all the way down through my jaw. I ended up having to have my eye removed. I crushed both tibia and fibia bones from the engine laying on my feet and my legs for so long. I almost lost my left foot, but Dr. Pfeiffer from OSU Orthopedics was awesome and she made sure that I didn't lose that foot. They were talking about you know, taking my legs. They ended up not taking my legs. They were able to fix them, thank God. So those things are all good things. Um, I ended up crushing my foot, like I said, um, three broken ribs that lacerated my spleen that ended up collapsing my lung, so I had to get a chest tube put in. They're not fun. They hurt, excruciating pain. I felt like it hurt worse going out than it did going in. Um, it was pretty painful. Um, I ended up having to learn how to walk again. Um, so I went from, Doan Hall to the atrium to Dodd Hall for rehabilitation. I was in Dodd Hall for a month. Um, I ended up having to rehabilitate kind of myself in my own little way. I crushed my um, left arm so I was unable to use, or my wrist, so I was unable to use that arm for any of the exercises that we did. So in my, I had a walker after my wheelchair to learn how to walk. I could use my right arm my left elbow that sat in like a little sleeve. And then I couldn't use my left leg, so just hopping on my right leg. That's how I started to learn how to walk again. Um, nobody ever came to therapy with me to see how I was doing walking wise. Uh, my family showed up one day and that was really exciting. Um, and my mom was there a couple times, so I can't say and nobody did, but um, a lot of people I, that I really wanted to be there and kind of be my cheerleaders, they kind of weren't there to do that. And that was kind of sad. Um, beginning, everyone was there. Um, then sort of after, everyone kind of disappears. So that's a little um, stuff we'll go over later, a little with self-esteem and all that. But um, I ended up, like I said, I was at Dodd Hall. All of my doctors, they would go into this room and they would give me um, tasks and set goals for me to achieve for the week. I had no clue what these goals were. Um, I just knew I needed to walk and I had to learn how to walk that nobody was going to teach me. Um, they could teach me, but they weren't going to do it for me. So I ended up, um, was like I said, I was in Dodd Hall doing that, had my mouth wired shut for eight weeks. So for eight weeks, I this is a thing that you guys can do. Um, I don't like pureated food. When I looked at it, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing it. So here's some tips and tricks about that. <laughs> so if your mouth is wired shut, you can actually puree, like grind, it might sound gross, but SpaghettiOs, like beefaroni and ravioli, I don't know where my thought process where I figured this out, but I did. Um, you basically just blend it down to like nothing and you can eat it, like through the wires. Um, don't eat around anybody because it's, it's not pleasant to look at, but you will actually be able to eat something and it actually does taste like SpaghettiOs. I mean, not any of us, none of us really want to eat SpaghettiOs, but if it's between that and pureed food, I'm for SpaghettiOs every day of the week. Also, another little tip and trick for us women in the hospital. If you are in the hospital and you are expected to stay there for you know more than a few days or just a few days, you are allowed to bring your own nightgown. You do not have to wear the hospital nightgowns. The only thing that they request from you is well, what they requested from me anyway, when I did it was just nightgowns, no pants, 
just nightgowns because if they need to cut, you know, cut something off of you, your clothing, something happens, they're able to access that really easily. So um, I ended up getting a lot of nightgowns because I was there for a month. Um, everyone told me I was the best dressed person in the place um, just because I woke up every day and just like I'm doing now that we're on lockdown, I'm getting dressed, I'm doing my makeup a little bit, I'm doing my hair a little bit, just trying to get back into the swing of things. So those are those little things that were done in the accident. Um, you know, that's changed my life forever, having all those broken bones. I now have um, eight metal plates in my face, two molar, which is a cheek implant, so two molar cheek implants done. I've had sinus, nasal um, cavity um, surgery. I've had them drill from my inside of my nose, and so my tears would drain through my nose. So a lot of times now that when I drink things, if I drink them too fast, they just come straight out my nose, which is not a good party trick for me. I don't want that one. So um, <laughs> those are my injuries that I can remember and that I can think of right now. And then next video, we're gonna go over the police report because there are so many things in this report that I didn't know about. Um, I found three pages that were from the officer that the questions that he straight asked the driver that evening and they're unbelievable. Even after six years, I thought I knew everything. I had no friggin' clue. So stay tuned, come see me next week, and I'm gonna let you know the rundown of my injuries. I'm gonna let you, again, and I'm gonna let you know what exactly happened in that police report and what is the truth. And because a lot of people are thinking a lot of different things, and I would love to know what you think or what you saw or what you've heard happen that night because I, like I said, I don't remember a lot, but I'm hearing everything from guns to marijuana, to him fleeing, to him looking for something on the ground, not doing anything to care for the person that's sitting underneath a 400 pound engine. So we're gonna be back with that. Next week I will be here. Um, it's gonna be actually this week on Friday. I'll have it posted. And then probably another topic with Tanya on Wednesday. So please comment those below. So we have some really awesome topics to talk about. And I will do some more research on my accident so that way I can kind of get back into the moment of it because it has been six years. Um, if anybody has any questions at all, any, uh, maybe they heard something, maybe they thought something, um, please come and direct them to me. Comment below, I don't care. The whole world can see it. I just want them, I just want everyone's answers to be, anyone's questions to be answered truthfully in the honest way and the right way. So come back and see me soon. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. Thank you.